warning. The following is considered normal in black America. Welcome back. What you just saw was some typical ignorance. And the problem with what I just showed you, this just happened a couple days ago or yesterday, not even a couple days ago. This is apparently Chris Brown and uh, Soul Job Boy are beefing. All right. So, so check this out. Um, I wanted to show you something current because I didn't want people to think that this was something that only happened in the past this is this is this week okay <clears throat> this is in the new year um i don't know what's going on oh apparently oh yeah this is what happened soldier boy liked on an instagram picture of chris brown's ex-girlfriend so all of chris brown's excuse me all of Soulja Boy's goons, who you just saw in the video, are wanting to attack Chris Brown, who Chris Brown got angry at Soulja Boy for liking on his ex-girlfriend's picture. Now they want to kill him, and you see the guns. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the dysfunction that I'm talking about in the black community. Um, now, I put that warning up there you know, being 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 tongue in cheek, but the 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 truth is is we have become all too used to those kind of videos. I mean, this is normal. This is a perfect example of abnormality made normal. Here are a bunch of guys who have nothing to do with this girl. They weren't dating her. They weren't in love with her. <laughs> but yet, they're ready and willing to inflict pain and suffering on Chris Brown on behalf of, on behalf of Soul Job Boy. And if you just listen to what they say in the video, they talk about, you know, gangs and this and that and all this craziness so the topic today is black rednecks yes black rednecks ebonics their origin and dysfunction the man on the the man on the screen first of all is a genius his name is dr thomas sowell S O W E L L. All right, right there on the book cover on the screen. He is a genius. He is the inspiration for several big time multi multi millionaire me media moguls today. Okay? Who have very, very successful talk shows. He is the inspiration for a lot of their talking points, a lot of the research that they present. This man, matter of fact, last week, his name was trending on, on Facebook because he just quit writing his column after I think 20 or 25 years, don't quote me. He just finished his column, but why is this important? This is quite possibly the most important thing, the important topic, the important interview book i haven't read the book i've listened to his interviews about the book um this is quite possibly the most important bit of information in understanding black american 
dysfunction. We got to go back to the beginning. We, we have to understand the source, the history. Check this out. This Dr. Thomas Sowell blew my mind when I first, uh, and if I sound a little bit excited right now, because I am, because this research is so groundbreaking. I mean, he blew my mind, literally, because this is what he said. What he discovered was blacks in America, who, and we all started in the South because of slavery, okay? Blacks in America get their, their behavior from a group of rednecks that came from England and that were, you know, obviously came over to America. They got it from a, lo a, a group of lower class whites. Their behavior, their, their speech, everything. Because you got to understand, as slaves, they weren't taught language. They had to pick up language from the slave masters and those around them. They weren't taught formally in school. And as a result of this miseducation, or should I say lack of education, we find the origins of Ebonics. I mean, there it is, Ebonics. <laughs> I mean, it really isn't rocket science. And what is Ebonics? Well, Ebonics is basically mispronounced words, incorrectly conjugated verbs, uh, and all sorts of other foolishness, ignorance, basically. And a lot of people are so caught up on Ebonics, like it's a part of African heritage. Ebonics is as worthless as slavery. We shouldn't want anything to do with either of them because it is the direct fruit of slavery. Am I making myself clear? I mean, people need to think. You cannot hold on to the vestiges of slavery as if it were something good. This is why I speak out against Ebonics. Look, we have black Americans, we have well over a dozen um, HBCUs, historically black uh, colleges and universities. We are a people that are about education. We put a good foot forward and we need to keep that going. Ebonics is a reminder of slavery, where we came from. It's a reminder of the painful past. It's a reminder of the treatment blacks faced during slavery. Okay, so for us to embrace Ebonics is foolish. It is foolish of us. Anyone who embraces, and we heard plenty of Ebonics and plenty of ignorance being displayed by these young men in the video. So, Dr. Thomas Sowell, in his research, discovered the link between basically poor white trash who came from England, okay, and blacks in the South, all right? So this, this link is indisputable. The, the research is clear. So when you look at what you see happening in certain communities, the way people speak, the way people behave, it is directly linked to 
those groups of people that he found in England. Now you got to find, you got to go look online. You can go on YouTube and find his interviews. In his interviews, he talks about the research and how he went to England and he actually found these people, these groups of people. Okay. Now, let me say this. In, in America, in black America, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on two points. First point I'm going to touch on is how black Americans, some black Americans feel as if it's um, a crime, a felony to, to not speak using Ebonics. Okay, now let's look at this. We have two groups of people. We have people who obviously can't speak English properly and wouldn't know the difference between Ebonics and properly spoken English. Okay, let's agree. Let's 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 agree to that. Number two, we have people who do what's called code switching. All right. Now, I'll admit I'm guilty of this sometimes when I get around my boys, you know, we get a little excited and we code switch. But the key is that we are able to code switch and we code switch at the proper times. There are people who, who literally cannot code switch because their proficiency in English is at the Ebonics level. And this is what they speak everywhere they go whether it be a job interview whether it be uh in front of the tv cameras and i always cringe when i see them interviewing somebody from the ghetto and they can hardly put together a proper sentence it's just it's just disturbing okay so that's those are the two differences now because of the popularity of hip hop and because of the popularity of um, urban culture, quote unquote, air quotes, okay? Because of the popularity, a lot of people who, some of which don't have any black friends, they start, they begin to believe that all African Americans speak like this, okay? Now, can you see the danger in this? Can you see how this might prejudice people? Can you see how this may cause people to create stereotypes, okay? Negative stereotypes. So what happens is when you when you have when you have an African American person who speaks, who 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 can code switch or who doesn't code switch, Okay, because maybe they were raised by Islander parents or parents from Africa who don't speak Ebonics or, you know, parents, their parents are immigrants, but they're black and they're a first generation American and they really can't speak Ebonics, but they could probably speak a few words here and there, but they, they're enable, they're incapable of code switching. These people tend to sound a little bit different, maybe closer to what their school teachers sounded like um intelligent okay what some people may say uh sounding white but i'll be quick to argue that not all whites sound intelligent be remember we have rednecks and this is where black rednecks picked up their dialect and behaviors from if you don't believe me go turn on maury povich turn on Mo maury povich turn on and you'll see sometimes we'll have people from the South turn on the Steve Wilco show. They tend to get mm, the same type of people, black and white and Hispanic on those shows. So you get to see it live. You get to see the same type of grammatical errors um, sometimes and the same type of behavior. So um, now there are some there are some uh, black American kids who were raised outside of uh, the African-American African community 
who who don't even realize that they sound different uh, when compared to other African Americans. Case in point, I wasn't raised in the the ghetto. Obviously, I was not, and you can hear it in my voice. Um, I remember, I can remember the first time I heard my voice on tape. Like I think it was probably on an answer machine. I was like, "Is that me?" I couldn't believe it was my voice. And and sometimes people, when they uh, when they talk to me on the phone, they don't realize that I'm African American. And that's okay because they're used to African Americans, like I said earlier, sounding a certain way. Okay, sounding very hood. And if not hood, there are African Americans who have a beautiful cadence. Okay, but they 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 speak properly. They conjugate their verbs. They they use the correct words, the correct nouns, the correct pronunciation. They don't say ax. They say ask. Okay, and they say specific, not. Pacific and different things like that, right? Um, depending on where you where where they're from regionally, it's a regional thing. But um, picking up that cadence is also something that you pick up when you live in the African American community. So um, a lot of people don't pick up that cadence because they they you know what happens is is their parents, if they're immigrant parents um, like mine, <laughs> they'll they won't live in the African-American community. They'll live somewhere else, okay? And what happens is, is the kids pick up a different dialect. They have different friends. And this is the whole point because they want their kids to go to good schools, okay? Anyway, um, Dr. Thomas Sowell, look him up, go on YouTube, spend some time watching his videos. Excellent, excellent research. Uh, We're gonna put something on the screen right now. he, hold on just a second. All right, so you look at your screen and uh, what do we see? Uh, this is this is another book that he wrote. It's called Intellectuals and Race. Um, and I think I might have touched on this slightly in another video, but what what is what is interesting, what is fascinating about this research? Actually, I sent you to the link. I sent you a link of this. But what is fascinating is that there was a professor that went to went to Germany and did some research that, you know, they were comparing, I guess, black Americans and then blacks overseas or the black Americans who had kids overseas. And in this case, it was Germany. So here are the the kids of uh, black soldiers uh, who had grown up in Germany. And what Professor Flynn concluded was that there there was no difference in educational level um, or capability um, between the the white German kids and the black kids or the mixed kids that grew up in in Germany and the one of the only variables was that there was no black subculture in Germany and what he was talking about is a subculture of specifically gangster rap okay um, now it may not be completely simplified to that but um, there are some other variables that I would say I would add to it such as um, the zoning of schools uh, less money going to urban schools um, and that sort of thing but even so even with that variable removed um it makes a big difference the the subculture makes a big big difference because um black kids do better where there's no gangster rap culture and this is proven in uh let's say um the black caribbean where uh you know african based people have their schools and they do better on average than black kids in America. So, and there's no gangster rap culture there. That's a difference. So I think that's a, it's an important variable in the study and it makes sense. It's logical, but it's not the full, it's not the, it's not the complete picture, but blacks overseas and in different places do better. And one of the reasons is why 
there is no gangster rap culture okay so we know that gangster rap is problematic everybody knows this okay we know that people listen to it they dress according to the music they speak like the rappers they commit crimes that the rappers talk about committing they do all everything that the music says they do it programs them and it's destructive and it just gets taught to generations and generations after so um anyway that that's what i wanted to share um black rednecks ebonics their origin and their dysfunction dr thomas i'll check them out i'm out